Welcome to Gamma Hydra Section 10. You are now in the neutral zone. The neutral zone. Gamma Hydra Section 10. Hi, and welcome to the Neutral Zone. Today, my guest is Bob Greenberger, a Star Trek author. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So, we've had a few of the other authors. Um, I'm going to ask you the standard question first, the five-minute plug, or I should say. What do you think of the sets? Well, <clears throat> you know, a number of the Star Trek authors were here in 2017, and we were blown away. Being back and seeing how much more has been added, how, what's been tweaked, uh, it's continues to you know be all inspiring uh, just it feels like everything you imagine once you started watching the show as a kid yeah, yeah. that's the, kind of the reactions very we've had people get very emotional uh-huh um, I know I did the very first time and we weren't even a set tour back then we, okay the set wasn't lit there's was paper on the floor and I hit that corridor and I looked down the corridor yeah it's and a corridor I that got, really sells it. I got weak knee I did and uh, you know and that's that's saying something anybody that knows me so Tell me about your writing. How did you get involved with Star Trek or writing in general? Um, uh, the short answer is Superman. Uh, growing up as a kid, uh, I liked the Superman comic and the Superman TV show with George Reeves that was in reruns as I was growing up. And I really got into what Clark Kent was doing as a reporter for the Great Metropolitan Newspaper. So I wanted to be uh, going into some form of journalism and was writing for my high school paper and the college paper and invariably um, my interest in comic books led to science fiction which led to Star Trek so I was catching some of the episodes during the original run uh, but really fell for the series uh, when it hit reruns in the uh, early 1970s at which point I was then writing about Star Trek for my school paper so it was like you know all, everything coming together and when I graduated college in 1980, I wanted to go into publishing, and uh, it was a bad time in the economy. The only publisher to interview me and thankfully offered me a job was Starlog Press. So all of a sudden, I'm working at, at the you know the country's leading science fiction magazine, where we were writing about Star Trek, yeah. among other things. Um, after a few years there, I moved over to DC Comics, which had the Star Trek comic book license. Mm -hmm. And given my vast knowledge of Star Trek by that point, um, I was I immediately asked to be the assistant editor on that project, and then when the editors moved on, I was given the book and I uh, ran it for eight years. Along the way, I got to know people at Pocket Books who were doing the novels. We were talking about storylines, making sure we weren't doing the same sorts of stories, or they weren't going to do a Harry Mudd novel when I was going to do a Harry Mudd comic. You know, just just for you know, keep things fresh. I started to get to know the other authors, and our writing opportunities opened uh, up, and uh, I started to collaborate with Peter David and Michael Jan Friedman. We did some books together, and then I did some solo books, and it's been like that ever since. Yeah. Do you have a particular genre of Star Trek that you prefer, TOS, TNG? As a, because it's a kid and it's visceral, it, it's the original series, um, from a creative level, because of the improved technology, improved um, uh, stories that could be told in television. Um, it's Deep Space Nine, I think, is the most creatively satisfying. Okay, interesting, interesting. Do you have a particular character you like to write about? What do you um, lean towards? I mean, for, I think we all have our favorites, right? I you mean, know, interestingly, um, I was asked to do a number of Next Generation stories, and I wound up doing a lot of Riker stories. And uh, so I've gravitated to Riker as a really good character um he's sort of like kirk without the angst right yeah he, he yeah. is a very good character i always liked him on the show among other things of all other characters but um if, did, did have you ever had a desire to write like an episode or actually a screenplay or i seem like to that? be in the minority there where i've watched friends um uh, like dave gallanter who's who's done work with james coley um on, on the fan films back in the right. day um, and others have written for the animated show or Kirsten Byers now on the Discovery staff. I wish them well. I don't seem to have that burning desire to write for film or television. I don't know why. Just, you know, hey, you know, it's whatever we, uh, whatever, that's not your genre. Right. So when you, how do you come up with an idea? You just, you just, something sparks your interest from an episode or you just say, hey, this would make a really neat story? You know, for me, it's usually looking at, at characters, if it's a media tie-in like Star Trek is, and that's a separate subgenre, um, 
you look at the characters and you look at what's been done with them on, on television and film and you say to yourself, all right, what haven't I seen? What combination of characters, what kind of conundrum have we not seen? And once I started asking myself those questions and I revisit a couple of episodes to maybe refresh myself on it, some aspect, I then find the question that propels my story. So uh, my first Solo Next Generation novel, I decided to make it a dipl- mostly a diplomatic story where Picard and the Romulans are both invited by a neutral world to come and say, look, you guys are fighting each other. We're in the middle. We want to ally ourselves with one or the other of you. Sell me. And so th- that all came out of the question of what if Picard sold the Federation and they lost? What if they picked the other side? <laughs> right. Interesting. Interesting. It's always interesting. So, what have you worked on any other fan, not fan films, sorry, uh, other genres besides Star Trek? Um, uh, science fiction a, or otherwise? Okay. Uh, I've done a lot of media tie in fiction o- over the years, a lot of short stories for Zorro and the Green Hornet and uh, Planet of the Apes, Predator. Uh, you know, so, it's a wide variety of the stuff I grew up and that I really enjoyed as a fan and I can see myself writing for. Uh, not every. TV show or movie lends itself or sure. appeals to me in the same way. Sure. Um, I've done a lot more original fiction over the last bunch of years uh, for anthology collections, including um, through Crazy Eight Press, which is a digital press imprint that Peter David, Michael Jan Friedman, and a whole bunch of others and I um, created about five, six years ago. So uh, we, you know, we take a lot of the ideas that we have that publishing might look oddly at or say we can't sell that and we sell it ourselves. Interesting. So, what's what's on the horizon, or can you, if you can give us a glimpse, or if it's not top secret? <laughs> well, um, honestly, uh, we're talking today in June, and uh, coming out in July is um, the hundred greatest moments of the Justice League. Uh, it's the first of three books that I was asked to write, uh, given my deep history uh, with comics knowledge. So coming up in the fall, following that would be 100 Greatest Super Heroine Moments, and then in 2019, uh, 100 Greatest Super Villain Moments, which is how I'm spending my summer writing. Neat. Yeah, awesome. and after that, see what the offers are or what occurs to me to write next. Right. I'm not sure. Interesting. Are there any uh, authors that inspired you or that you, you, uh, you know, not necessarily try to mimic, but definitely use their genius or whatever you want to call it that, that is, like I said to, okay. to continue <laughs> yeah. well my, my okay my dad saw I was interested in comics and science fiction and one day he took me to the bookstore and bought me a copy of Asimov's Mysteries which happened to be a short story collection of, of science fiction mysteries so Isaac Asimov was quite influential early on and then I branched out to a lot of the other um popular writers of the late 60s, early 70s. So, uh, like, Harlan Ellison was uh, sure. hugely... Ben Bova, yeah. uh, writers like that. In From the sev- their work in the 70s, uh, John Haldeman. Uh, today, if I'm sitting down writing stuff, um, I'm very impressed by how Jim Butcher, who's Dresden Files books, uh, or I've been writing for the last decade plus... Uh, how he structures stories and does world building. I find that very inspirational. And um, for dialogue and character, I look. At, I still look at Aaron Sorkin scripts, uh, West Wing and, and the newsroom and such. Uh, that's really inspirational for me. Right. Well, I want to thank you for coming. My uh, pleasure. This was a time treat. for this to talk. Um, I hope you're enjoying your time here. We always Absolutely. love having you guys. Thank you. So uh, we'll come back soon. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. That's all for this episode. Please subscribe and like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Go to StarTrekTour.com for more information about tours, special events, and tickets.